If you've seen my videos before, you know that I cover a lot of Capture the Flag video walkthroughs and write-ups. Capture the Flag, or CTFs, is a great way to learn cybersecurity. Boost your security skills, learn new vulnerabilities, tools and tricks and techniques, all while having fun along the way. But it can be a little hard getting started in Capture the Flag. Like, hey, you're just dropped into some new environment like a netcat socket or some assembly code to look at, and they're like, good luck. <laughs> I remember when I was first getting started with CTF, I was using like obj dump, obj dump, you know, that command line tool that'll just spit out assembly. And you don't really know what you're looking at. It's like trial by fire. So if you're looking to get started and capture the flag, learn the ropes, or just learn something new, check out Sneak's Capture the Flag 101 workshop on April 28th. You'll learn how to solve different CTF challenges across different categories like web application security and binary exploitation. The Sneak team will walk through a live step-by-step -step demonstration on how to solve a CTF challenge and what to look out for and what techniques to try. And then in the hands-on portion of the lab, you'll solve your first Capture the Flag challenge. And you'll have live support along the way so you can always ask questions whenever you need to. It's all online, totally free, and you can sign up with my link in the description below. Seriously, if you're new to Capture the Flag or if you know someone who is or you just want to get your friends involved, go check out Sneak's workshop. I really love the team over at Sneak. I know they do fantastic and exceptional stuff, and I'm sure this one is going to knock it out of the park. I'm looking forward to learning about all the things that you learned about in the Sneak CTF 101 workshop. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video showcasing more Pico CTF 2022. In the last video, we did some quick forensics, kind of carving through a scalable vector graphics file, image file cool, to be able to dig out some pieces that could put the puzzle pieces together and build out the flag for us. Haven't seen that video? Please go take a look. Should be a lot of fun. But without further ado, let's get after what we're getting into today. So I'm here on my Kali Linux virtual machine. I have a directory set up inside my terminal for Pico CTF. And now we're moving on into a reverse engineering category. Now I have to admit, uh, you probably already noticed binary exploitation, reverse engineering, not my strong suit. It's something that I want to get better at, learn more about. So Please forgive me if I'm fumbling along, making mistakes, or just not always knowing the answer or the full explanation to some of the stuff. Hopefully I can at least wade my way through the waters for these early beginner ones, but I'm totally going to fail when we get into later videos. Anyway, let's check out this file run one challenge. It says a program has been provided to you. What happens if you try to run it on the command line? What is, is, the, is that the challenge? Just literally running a program? <laughs> uh, hey, let's go ahead and download it here and I'll move into my directory here. Let's go ahead and create a reverse engineering directory for that category. And we'll call this, what is this challenge called? File run one. Ooh, there we go. And now I can use wget paste in that link to download it. Cool. All right, so we have this file run called, uh, and I'm gonna actually verify what this thing is. It is an ELF 64-bit, so a Linux executable, 64-bit uh, compiled on the, the architecture, right? Um, and that's it. Okay, uh, so I can't run this program until I mark it as executable. And you saw us maybe dabble in this a little bit ago. If you add little plus sign the executable bit, change modifications of the file here, that can be done on that run file. Now it's marked in green, actually ls tac la to list all, all the attributes. It is noted with an X and that I and anyone can execute it. So let's do it. Let's use dot run. And that was the challenge. <laughs> I feel embarrassed to upload this, guys. <laughs> Can, is is this is this really how we should spend this video? Submit flag. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know what? Let's actually make the most of this. Let's uh, go ahead and try to uh, let's make our workflow a little bit better and create some scripts for us. How about that? Uh, I had been repeatedly marking challenges as complete by renaming the folder. And in previous Pico CTF videos, I showed how we could go ahead and do that and create that, a script to make a quick command for that sort of thing. And just saving how we get the flag, etc. So let's do that. Uh, let's write a script. Let's say, uh, here's, a, here's a finish command we could maybe run where we could... Add a shebang line, 
And what the finish command will do is it will work through the process of us moving, hey, inside of the directory and marking that file as complete. How about that? Does that work? What we could do is we could say, let's um, pop D to the parent directory. Yeah, or, or, or I guess, does pop T actually show us where we were? That's one command we could use, pop D to move to the previous directory. Oh, and it does give us our the output of where we were. Um, or does it push, does push D is where we wanna actually navigate to that. Oh, but it puts it on the st like stack of things as you, you're pushing and popping directories. Uh, yeah, that'll keep moving us around. Can I push D? I don't like saying that out loud. <laughs> You know what? We could just use the pwd command to tell us what our current directory is or was. So maybe if we were in file run, knowing the output and value of the present working directory, that'll tell us the original directory that we were in. So let's actually capture that. Let's say um, original directory can equal a dollar sign parentheses of the pwe command. That actually will give us the command substitution as if it were capturing the output of running this command and storing it in a variable within bash. With that said, I could just echo out the dollar sign original directory and that'll give me the value of that variable in bash. So let's uh, try and run that. I'll use a, we'll, we'll make our finished script executable. And we could see, Hello, did I not save that file? Okay, I apparently didn't hit control S and save the file. We can see that it retrieves our present working directory. Nice and easy, right? So if we were to move up a directory, we could then simply move our original directory to original directory completed. Yeah? Nice and easy. Uh, noted though, this is gonna think that it's part of the variable name, but it's not. So with that, we could tell bash to be explicit. And let's add curly braces surrounding the variable name. And now it'll know, okay, that's what we want it to do. And that marks the directory as completed for us. Nice and easy, super simple, kind of dumb. But if I tried to run this, you'll notice it doesn't move our directory, but it did make the change. So what happened there? Uh, we didn't change directories. The reason that's happening is because this is all running in like a quick subshell. Uh, we don't need to echo this out anymore, but if we were to actually end up maybe running this source and sourcing this into our current context of the shell, let me move our run completed to file run one uh, and try and do this again. But I will watch my prompt here as I use source of our finish.sh script. There we go. Now that that's been displayed out, we no longer are in that file run one directory and it has modified the directory for us. Super cool, super easy. That's how we could do it. Uh, did it, why was it still printing that? <laughs> was, uh, I still didn't save the echo removing, whatever, I don't care. We can close it out and now it's good. So that script is something that we could use to say, hey, this is a completed challenge. Uh, let's move that finish.sh script into something like our opt directory. Um, there's some place that you have write permissions and it's not anything that's gonna get in the way or you don't have to worry about it. And then we could actually modify like our bash RC file or our Z shell RC file which is the like configuration file for your shell. In this case, in Kali, I'm running Z shell. You might be running bash if you're on Ubuntu or whatever. Uh, and you could just add an alias down at the very, very bottom. I have a couple in here, so forgive me. Um, yeah, that, whatever. <laughs> I was worried about, oh, password in there? Nah, you can't see the rest of it, who cares? Um, let's set an alias for finish to actually just be source our opt finish.sh script. Nice and easy. So now we could quickly run that command uh, whenever we're done with a challenge. But that was all nice and dandy. I also still want something that will be able to retrieve the flag for us. And you think we could do that? Like, say we entered a, a command and we used run and then we did something like, oh, I wanna retrieve only the command here. 
I want to grep out only tack O with extended regular expressions with capital E here. Uh, I'll use Pico CTF as the flag format uh, inside of those curly braces or things that I want to track. So I'm using a dot to represent any character inside of Pico CTF, an asterisk to mean any character as many times as possible. And that will display here's the flag for us. Uh, I'm going to actually turn color off color equals none with grep, so you don't have that blaring red text. Uh, and, and that could be how we retrieve our flag. And maybe this could be on its own a get flag script. This command on its own could be, hey, we, we were able to encapsulate how we got the flag within one command. For quick, simple stuff, maybe that's worthwhile for us. So what I could do is create like a save flag or save um, script. Let's do save.sh. And again, we'll start with our shebang line, bin bash. And what if we could retrieve from our history the last command that we ran? Maybe, right? So if I were to use history and then grab with tail the very, very last line, what will that display for me? Let's try and run this previous thing. And then let's use our source of a save.sh. Okay, it would be able to retrieve the very last command here. But it has a couple stuff in the way. Uh, in fact, here I have a whole lot of commands that are ran previously. Wow, we looking through all of our past work. Ultimately, you'll notice that this has an offset of the numbers, but it seems like it keeps growing to however many characters this is with an offset. Let's do Python to check out how many characters that is. It looks like it's a static padding of, of space before showing the command. Okay, it's seven characters. So if we took maybe the first seven characters off, could we grab, um, could I cut based off of del a value? Is cut the right way to do that? Yeah, select only these bytes. Could I do seven and onwards? Let's try that. Cut tax seven onwards. Will that work? Let's run the same command. Let's run our script and there it gets it. Okay, super cool. So it might actually be best to be eight onwards then. Yeah, so that grabs the full command here. And we could just slap that in to a get flag.sh script. Now that we have that output, we could say, okay, uh, winning command could again be based off the command substitution of this process that we sort of made here. We could say, let's actually create a new file. I'm actually gonna use cat to do this. I think cat is the best way to do it. Or is it echo? One way or the other, we could use a here doc. If you haven't heard of here docs in bash, it's where you say, hey, I wanna be able to read up to an end of file, blah, 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 blah. So I have multi-line stuff, nice and easy for us. And let me redirect that out to our get flag .sh script. That we might wanna be able to write in the current directory, yeah? So that will actually include its own shebang line. I know it looks kind of weird having a nested script inside of a script, but then we could just include our variable of the winning command. And then we could make our get flag script executable. And then we might just even run it and redirect it to a flag.txt. So with that said, if I were to run the command that I just ran to get the flag. And if I were to use our new save script, no output, but I've now created a get flag.sh script and I've saved that flag.txt file. So I could now always retrieve the flag that we previously got and I could just simply use a get flag.sh to retrieve it any other time and I've kept track of how I solved that challenge. That might be super duper good for your notes. Again, for simple, small, tiny stuff, maybe you're making write-ups, maybe you're just trying to teach other people, anything. This will help, I hope. 
It's one cool thing to be able to keep track of, hey, your solution and mark this challenge as complete or done or otherwise, and even keep track of the flags that you retrieved. So with that said, let's go ahead and actually move that save.sh script and put that in our op directory just as well or you could put it in any location that you'd like in your home directory in some hidden folder or whatever. And let's make an alias to save. And in that case, we will source our save.sh script. So I could now run, oh, here's a uh, sourcing my zshell.rc file. And let's do this challenge all over again. Even though it was super dumb, super easy, just literally running a file. Can I use the save command? I can. Can I use the finish command? I can. So <laughs> let me remove all of my progress from file run one completed. And let's do that all over again. I just downloaded this file. Say I was working through this challenge. We'll create a file run one directory. Move into it. W get the file. Mark the run binary as executable. And we know that we would run and grep for only the flag. And if we could save that, cool. Now we have our get flag.sh script already completed for us. We have saved our flag.txt value and we could now finish and say that challenge was done. We completed it and now we have that marked and we no longer have to worry about it. Super cool. I hope that helps. I hope it's maybe just some quick stuff to make your life a little bit easier when you're tracking challenges that you complete going through some capture the flag events. Uh, we have milked that silly, stupid, literally run a file challenge into 15 minutes of content together, everybody. And I hope maybe there's some good nuggets in there. Maybe you got to do some stuff with Bash you haven't done before. But um, seriously, save, finish, keeping track of your flags, keeping track of your solutions, marking things as done. I think they'll help in the long run. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you like this video, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. Please do like the video. Please do leave a comment. Please do subscribe. Turn that red to gray. It really helps the channel grow. Share, support. I'm a big fan. Thanks so much, everybody. I love ya. <laughs> I don't say it enough. I really do. I don't say... I really do love you, and I, I really don't say it enough. Anyway, take care. I'll see you in the next video. With the